Welcome to the Daily Message. I'm Dane Spots. Have you lost someone in your life? Perhaps recently? The last year or two? A loved one? A family member? A precious pet? A close friend? Of course, we all do. Loss is a part of life. And the suffering, the grief, a part of the human experience. Death is an essential part of living. All things die and return to the earth from where they came. The experience of loss is something we all experience, and everyone experiences it differently at their own pace. There's no right or wrong way to grieve. I've experienced it. The loss of my beloved Luna, a beautiful Shiloh Shepherd dog who was my best friend and companion. They call it degenerative myelopathy, It's like Lou Gehrig's disease for dogs. My Luna Bear, 130 pounds of giant fluffy fur that I woke up to each morning for more than a decade. Though it was time to say goodbye to her as she was suffering, that idea didn't ease my pain. When the vet drove up my driveway that Sunday afternoon to perform the euthanasia, all I could think about was, am I really doing this? What if there was something else I could do? She could see my distress over this, and having performed hundreds of these was compassionate and caring as I lay there on my back patio holding my Luna for over an hour and saying goodbye before she administered the anesthesia. It all happened so fast then. She was there and a moment later gone. As my hand felt her heart stop beating, I think all the stages of grief passed before me in a matter of seconds. Shock, denial, anger and bargaining. Like, what did I do? How can I take it back? The vet stayed with me for another hour and we both sobbed together. She reassured me that I did the right thing for Luna and then said, you know, Dane, she was a heart dog. I asked her, what's a heart dog? And she said, well, there are dogs that are just dogs and then there are heart dogs. Those that really know how to love like humans. And Luna was one of those, a heart dog. That helped to ease the pain, I guess, as we moved Luna's lifeless body to the van where she took her to the crematorium. I get it now. I understand why we have funerals and why we honor our dead the way we do. It's a way of accepting loss. I used to think that funerals or wakes, honoring the loss of our loved ones, was unnecessary or silly. But of course it's not. I just didn't understand. By honoring the memory of our deceased, it allows us to express our feelings of love, respect, and most of all, gratitude. But more importantly, it helps us acknowledge the reality and the finality of their death. We cry and accept and release the sadness, the regret, or even anger and guilt. Talking, crying, or writing about it isn't unnecessary or silly, it's important. And finding meaning and purpose in our loss helps us grow and cope with the new changes that come with that loss. All the stages we may go through to some degree or another, I did. It's a way of dealing with the overwhelming emotions of loss and a way to cope with the impact and injustice of it all. If I just did this differently, maybe I could have saved her. We think the world is so cruel and so unfair, and it is. Will I ever understand? Will the pain go away? But of course it does. Time heals all, they say. I think of it more like the ringing of a bell whose sound slowly dissipates over the course of time until you don't hear it anymore. We grieve because we love. Grief is a natural response to losing someone that's important to us. It's what happens as we adapt to the fact that our loved one is gone and we're carrying the absence of them with us. This is human, perhaps the highest knowingness that we are human, and we suffer because of that love. For those of you who've experienced the loss of a loved one for which you think the sound of the bell will never stop ringing, I would invite you to watch the movie Shadowlands. It will give you something, something valuable, that helps make sense of these things. 
Shadowlands is a 1993 movie based on the life of C.S. Lewis, the famous British writer and professor, perhaps known best as the author of the Chronicles of Narnia. He fell in love with an American poet named Joy Gresham. They met through correspondence and eventually married. But their happiness was cut short by Joy's death from cancer. The film explores Lewis's grief in the face of loss and his struggle with his faith. Lewis lived a safe and comfortable bachelor's life. He was a successful scholar and a writer, but was insulated from real love until he met Joy. Their relationship changed him from being just an observer of life to a vulnerable and passionate participant. He discovered a truth that pain and joy are inseparable aspects of love and that love is worth the risk of loss. And through this, he learned to accept it as part of the contract. Loss is a part of love, he wrote, which is only too real for the bereaved. And for all pairs of lovers, without exception, bereavement is a universal and integral part of our experience of love. Shadowlands is powerful, a moving film that shows how love can transform a person's life, even in the face of death. I highly recommend it, even if you have not yet faced great loss in your life. At the end of the film, during the closing scene, Lewis is speaking to Joy's son, Douglas, who's grieving for his mother. He tries to comfort him by sharing his own experiences of love and loss. He says this, Why love if losing hurts so much? I have no answers anymore. Only the life I've lived. Twice in that life, I've been given the choice, as a boy and as a man. The boy chose safety. The man chooses suffering. The pain now is part of the happiness then. That's the deal. The older I get, the older we all get, the more loss we'll encounter. And the takeaway for all of it is that pain and joy are inseparable aspects of love and that love is worth the risk of loss. It's all part of the bargain that love entails. You can't have one without the other. You can't love without losing. And you can't lose without loving. And so it is. 